Tasmania is the only place on the planet where carnivorous marsupials like devils and quolls are at the top of the food chain. But the natural order is changing. As disease decimates devil populations, feral predators invade to take their place. And they could devastate native mammals and ground nesting birds. We're joining a team of ecologists who can figure out what lives in this environment without necessarily seeing any animals. The trick is to analyse the DNA in their droppings that identifies the predators and even what they eat. But first, we've got to find some poo. So the idea behind this survey of poo is to uh, put species on the map, really, to get an idea of where invasive species are distributed in Tasmania and also where native species are distributed. Using trained volunteers, surveys like this are a cost-effective way to detect elusive animals across a large area. For animals that are cryptic, and a lot of Australian wildlife is very cryptic, it's nocturnal, hard to trap, hard to, hard to see, um, but they do leave their scats and the, the DNA in the scats tells us quite a lot about what they do and where they go and what they eat. Feral cats already take a huge toll on native wildlife, but there's an even bigger fear that's persisted for the last decade, that foxes have also spread from mainland Australia to Tasmania. If they were to establish in Tasmania, we would lose a lot of really valuable um, small mammal species that are no longer present in the mainland because of foxes. It's a challenging place to find a fox, let alone its droppings. So by necessity, the great poo hunt is the largest of its kind ever attempted in Australia. This survey is covering the eastern half of Tasmania. It's the fourth one since 2008, searching several hundred squares of three kilometres each side. It's vital to know for sure if foxes are here, because nothing less than the future of Tasmania's native wildlife is at stake. But they're also looking for scats from devils, quolls, dogs and cats. Aha, look, here's a couple. That looks like... There's another one there. Ah, uh, it could be a latrine here. Over there, I can so see some old bits over there yeah, too. Button. Yep. So the animals like coming to the one spot to do the business? Yeah, so predators like devils and even quolls sometimes will deposit their scats in one confined area which we refer to as a latrine. Makes it easier for you. Yeah, it does. It's a lot of work when you find one, though. Mm. <laughs> this reminds me a little of a crime scene. Yeah. It's a little bit like that, isn't well, it? Well, we do actually treat the samples like forensic evidence and we bag them up, we take the bag and we sign over it so that we can prove that they haven't been tampered with right. and that they haven't been contaminated. Hmm. But you don't have to say... Although a live fox has yet to be found, the results from previous surveys were startling. What we found is that uh, foxes occurred in quite a number of localities in eastern Tasmania. It made for an alarming headline on their research paper. Of the 10,000 or so scats collected since 2002, 61 have tested positive for fox DNA. The results prompted the state government to launch a controversial baiting program using 1080 poison. But sceptical locals, including other scientists, question the reliability of the DNA evidence and whether the results were real. One of the main objections I've had to it is that uh, there's a risk that the scats are actually uh, being planted by people. Uh, BR84. Yep. So in addition to their original fox test, this time they're using next generation genetic sequencing to identify the contents of the scats and an extra swab test on top of that. The animal, when it passes the scat, leaves a lot of epithelial cells from its intestine on the outside of the scat, and so a large part of the DNA in the scat will be from the animal that passed it, but it also includes DNA from the animals that it's eaten. All the scats and swabs they collect are processed at the genetics lab at the University of Canberra using a technique called polymerase chain reaction or PCR. 
We might be starting with a very small amount of DNA from a scat sample, but um, the PCR process basically allows us to target the gene we're interested in and then make many copies of it. The gene fragment we've looked at in a single scat. So in this case, we've got about 150,000 DNA sequences. So each one of those sequences there represents a different DNA molecule that we got from the scat. So there's information about the whole ecosystem there just in one poop. Yeah, yeah, and in fact, you know, just in um, a little bit of DNA when you get down to it. They fine-tune the tests to detect reptiles, birds or mammals by using short fragments of synthetic DNA called primers. You design them to be complementary to the DNA you're interested in. So if you're designing a species-specific test, you would want primers that match the gene sequence from the species you care about but that don't match the sequences from all the other species that might be out there as well. The gene sequences are identified by comparing them against known DNA from public databases. But a rival team of scientists ran their own experiments and concluded that the University of Canberra DNA testing wrongly identifies scats as coming from foxes. Stephen disagrees. Our fox test is a, is a dual test, so it, it involves not just the amplification, but also the sequencing. So they didn't sequence their samples or they didn't include that in their evaluation of the test, but also um, they used different PCR conditions. So their evaluation wasn't actually an evaluation of the test that we use for foxes. This year, 70 people have tramped over 4,000 kilometres to collect another 2,800 scats. Well, certainly if there are any foxes existing in Tasmania and if we did find their scats, that would show up in the genetic analysis. And being able to identify what they've been eating should settle the debate about whether foxes are actually present. So if we find in these scats that they contain prey that are unique or assemblage of prey that's unique to Tasmania, then I'd say the evidence that they've been free living in Tasmania is is indisputable. They won't know for sure until all the results are in, which won't be for some months yet. Whether it leads to a new war against foxes remains to be seen. So far, the evidence is very strong that foxes are or have been present in Tasmania. I think if, if you took that evidence and then didn't, didn't act, that would be um, a far bigger risk for the people of Tasmania and indeed the world because of the unique biodiversity in Tasmania. <laughs>